Hey guys, it's Erin of Lady Poe Designs. It has been a while. I am so sorry. I've been so busy with work and had a lot of orders with the bunny boxes, but I'm back with three scrap wood projects and some spring DIYs. So let's get started. First up, I've just got two wood blocks. I think these are two by tens and do not know the sizes. They were scrap wood. I literally just cut them, but we're going to use the new uh, mercantile. I don't know how to say these stamps, y'all. I don't, but we're going to season the stamps because we have not used them yet. So we're going to take a low grit sandpaper and it is suggested that you sand one way and then flip it 90 degrees and sand that way. So it makes kind of like a cross hatch. So it grabs the paint onto the stamp, if that makes sense. And right here I'll show you, you can tell the difference. The top one has not been seasoned or sanded. I call it seasoned. That one has. So you can tell which ones you've done and which ones you haven't. So we're going to go ahead and do both of them. I'm not going to show you that whole thing. But remember to season your stamps. You don't have to, but they do work better. Another thing that's new with the IOD stamps is the masks are printed, which is really cool. Shiny side is the right side. Matte side goes down. So just remember that. Um, on this first project, I did use my Cricut for a little saying. I found this little book, um, and it has a lot of little really cute sayings in it. Super cool, and this one just kind of spoke to me, and hello, we finally have a horse stamp. So, yeah, I'm going to use it. So... I saw Sammy mix up this purple, and y'all y'all don't know me, of course. Um, purple is my favorite color, so I had to make it. So I mixed Hey Sailor and Kissing Booth and made a really pretty purple and put some salt wash in it. And we're going to put Hey Sailor in a little cup, mix some salt wash. We're going to put this paint on with a little bit of a different kind of technique. We're also going to mix up some Old 57 with salt wash and set it aside. And we're going to let it dry out in a sense. But we're going to use a spatula. And kind of scrape it onto the wood. But first, we're going to, of course, stain it with a dark and decrepit. I don't like... <laughs> it's not that I don't like the color of real wood. Well, not real wood, but you know what I mean. It has to be darker. I don't like light wood. I like darker wood. And this is going to be layers. So we're going to be scraping off layers as we go. So I went ahead and stained it with the dark and decrepit. And we're going to, I'm going to speed this up a lot because I literally just scrape this on haphazardly everywhere just until it's covered. And I go back and forth between the purple and the blue just until the block is covered. And I'm not worrying if it's not flat. I'm, I want there to be texture. I just want the wood to be almost covered. I'm not even worried that it's peeking through, but I don't even know why I started putting it on like this, but you'll see it's kind of a theme throughout this entire video that I use this technique. So I did it on both sides. And once those two colors are dried, I take the old 57 and put another layer over that because I want this to look like it's been painted and painted and painted because we're going to start scraping layers off, right? Um, so I'm going to put the old 57 over both of those. And you can't really tell 
on screen, but this, these are not thick layers. When you're using the spatula, you're barely scraping that paint on. So it's a very thin layer. So now I'm mixing up some crinoline with some salt wash. And all of my DIY products, IOD, salt wash, all of that, I get from Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs. I will leave her link below. So if you need any of these products, you can get them from her. See, I'm showing you the consistency is almost like cream cheese. It's really thick. So I'm going to cover the entire thing with crinoline because we're going to stamp this. So I want the colors to be able to show through. So we've got all of our layers down. They're all dry. Okay. So now I'm going to start taking a different <laughs> spatula and start scraping it off and making it smooth. And I want those layers to come through. I want the old 57 to show. I want the Hey Sailor to show. I want that purple color that we created to show. Not through the entire thing, mostly on the edges. But you will you can see it peek through that crinoline. It's not a full coverage. I, I only did one coat of each one. So they are very light coats. But we're going to go over this entire block and just scrape off um, just chunks of the color. And it just makes it look very rustic and very weathered. I'm going to use just a little buffer to make it flat so the stamps will lay flat. Use my little ladybug to clean up the dust. And we're going to get our stamps out. We're going to use one little, I don't even know what you call that, just a little element from the bottom of the stamp. And then our horse. Oh, y'all are so happy that there's finally a horse stamp. I was, oh, I was giddy. So, I, of course, I had to use that one first. But we're going to use the black IOD ink and ink up our stamp using our little grid mat transfer thingy from IOD. I love the grid because it helps me line it up. It's straight. Lay that down. I always keep one hand on the stamp and the other one just traces the stamp with my fingers. But you get that stamp down and y'all the details and this horse. Oh my gosh. It's so pretty. So now I'm going to mix up just a little bit more of that purple because with the stencil that I'm putting down, I want to incorporate all three of those colors that we put throughout the block. So I want the Hey Sailor, I want the Old 57, and I want that purple. So I'm going to start with the Hey Sailor and basically cut the letters in half and stipple or stencil half of the letters. Then I'm going to go in with the old 57 and do the top half of the letters. Well, then I got that purple and put a couple of drops into the old 57 just to kind of make it an in-between color. And I'm going to do that in the middle. I don't know if I'm making sense, but you'll see. <laughs> so when I start pulling it off, it did pull up some of the letters. So I had to go back and hand paint them back on, but that's okay. It still turned out good. So I just cleaned it all up. Put a layer of liquid patina over my letters and the ink. So this will seal the, the paint over the entire block and the ink. And this is how it turned out. I love it. And this is just a scrap piece of wood 
and it's whether it's life or a horse that throws you, get right back on. And I think this message can speak to everybody right now. I think we're all going through hard times. So let me know if this one speaks to you and tell me what you think in the comments. So the second one, I took the, basically what I had left of the purple and the blue and just mixed water with it and kind of stained the wood. Um, so now I'm going to take um, crinoline and do a very heavy dry brush. Um, I don't really think you can even consider this a, a dry brush. Um, more, I don't know, like a very streaky coat, <laughs> kind of, but I do it over the entire block, right? So now we're going to take the, uh, quality grains and the rooster from that same stamp set. The, is it mercantile, mercantile, Mer I don't know how to say it y'all. Um, and we're going to take the China Blue ink from IOD and lay this one down using that grid, making sure it's straight. Wipe off all the excess because I'm messy. That grid, that grid helps so much. But we're going to put that stamp down. And see, I just trace the letters with my fingers. That rooster is incredible. Okay, so here are the the masks. And see, the shiny side goes up. And you'll see that when you get them. But you can, like, lay these out and design your whole project. They're really cool. So I'm going to lay the masks down and take the stone gray. And this stamp set also has grain stripes. So I'm only going to ink up the outer two stripes. And I'm going to offset this to the right. I know I knew if I tried to get it directly in the middle that I wouldn't be able to. And it would irritate me. So I offset it. Um, but I got that one on there. And it took the masks off for me. <laughs> and then another little element that says number seven. I'm going to put that off to the left. And then the little date says 1879, I think. Yeah. Put that to the right. And then sand it off, make it look scuffed up and old on the side. Bring that wood on the corners through. And then I'm going to seal everything, the entire block, with some liquid patina. And here's how she turned out. I love her. Just a couple of really cute uh, shelf sitters that can really be set anywhere. You can even put a sawtooth hanger on the back and hang them on the wall if you want or set them in the kitchen. I think they're really cute. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Okay, now this third one was a challenge. Sammy sent me a picture and it, I could not find the creator for anything. Um, it was a little box with a spindle on it that made the box look like a water pitcher. Um, so I was like, okay, I can do that. So I literally just nailed together a box very roughly. Don't even know what sizes they were. Didn't even sand it, y'all. This is all scrap wood. Um, you could tell it's not even straight on the inside. But I have this old handle that I'm going to drill into the side. So I'm going to drill my holes for that. And when she sent this to me, I was like, is that a box or a drawer? And she was like, I'm not sure. It looks like a two by 10, maybe. 
And I was like, yeah, but you got to be able to put florals in it. So I made it a box. You can make it whatever you want. I made it a box. <laughs> but I had to be able to get the handle on and nail the spindle on. So I left the back open for right now. I am going to close it up. But we're going to go in with dark and decrepit and stain it, of course, because it's light wood. And I don't like it. <laughs> so we're going to make it darker and then cover it up, of course. We're going to take crinoline. And I know I used a spatula with the first two blocks because I actually completely <laughs> forgot that... IOD makes silicone spatulas. They have a little one and they have a larger one for furniture. And I have them. I just didn't think of them when I was doing the first set. So I broke these little puppies out. And if I'm telling the truth, y'all, this if you want to paint something really fast, <laughs> this works really well. <laughs> Because let me tell you what, I've painted this box in like two minutes. It took no time at all. I had that paint on there so fast. I mixed a little bit of salt wash with it. Even on the edges, you can see I put paint on the edges. I just flicked it back and forth like a paintbrush and it works like a paintbrush. It's really cool. I'm painting the spindle with it. It works really well. So, I mean, if you ever want to get paint on something fast, and you don't have to mix salt wash, you can use DIY paint or clay-based paint, um, chalk paint, really any kind of paint with those, and still it'll work fine. So now we're going into the pastiche. I do not think I'm saying that correctly, but this is the... The other stamp set, this is the cloches and the birdhouses and, oh, y'all, this stamp is so pretty. Um, but I'm going to season this one as well. And this is what I was saying about the masks. You can lay them out and basically design your whole project and not have to take your stamps off of the backers. You can just set them aside. But you can play around because I cut out a lot of playing around. I was putting these everywhere on this trying to design it. But now I've got my stamps and I'm going to start putting them on little pieces of um, carrier sheets and inking them up and replacing where I put the masks. So I'm going to slip this mask out of the way and place my little birdie sometime. There we go. And I'm going to do that process with all of them. Even has a little hanger for the bird cages. They're so cute. Using the green ink, the blue ink, the, the black ink. So now I'm going to go over the entire box with liquid patina. This is going to seal all of that paint in and it's going to make sure that that ink doesn't go anywhere, even though it's permanent ink. Now we're going to make a little sign to go in our water pitcher wood thingy, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but these are popsicle sticks and I kind of tore the ends off. So now the apothecary labels. These are so cool, y'all. I got a piece of drop cloth and I cut it to the size of the little... I wanted the popsicle sticks to look like they were snapped. So I, I snapped them off with my my clippers. So I've got a little stir stick. I'm going to glue my little slats, my popsicle sticks on to make my, my little sign. 
And of course, I've got to stain it because it's light wood. <laughs> but now, after I stain it, I'm going to go in with the um, old and gray barnwood patina. So this will give it a little variation on the wood. It'll make it look a little grungier. So now I've put my letters on my little grid and I'm going to stamp spring on my drop cloth. And then I'm going to glue that onto my little sign. This is so cute. This turned out really cute. I, I really like how this turned out. So now I'm going to flip the box over. I've got some floral foam from just Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put a big chunk of it in there. Glue it down. At some point. There we go. Yeah. Glue it down. And usually I don't glue my foam in, but I knew I wasn't going to go all the way to the bottom with it. These are paint sticks that I get off of Amazon. That's why they're so skinny. I didn't know they were going to be that skinny when I bought them. So I've had them, I've had them for years. But I'm going to paint these uh, crinoline the same color as the rest of the box. And this is just to close up the back of the box. And plus, if I get tired of the birds and the stuff on the front, I can flip it and stamp something on um, this side and it'll be like a, I don't know, like a, like a shutter kind of look. I can stamp a different picture on this side if I want to basically and just flip it around. So I'm not limited to just facing it one way. But I'm going to glue these down just using some wood glue and some hot glue for some immediate hold. So I got these peonies flowers off of Amazon. I think these are the peach ones. But I'm going to stick those down in there. And off camera I found some purple um, baby's breath. Stuck those in there too. And then put my little sign in there. And look how this came out. Oh, I think it's so cute. I love the spindle. I, I love the flowers. Just perfect. And the little sign it just made it absolutely adorable. Thank you, Sammy, for sending this to me. I think it's so, so cute. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Okay, so our last project is some art. I got this frame and I printed out this dapper little gentleman on some rice paper that I had. So we're going to put him in this frame. So I've got my water pen. I'm going to take off the excess paper. Um, I'm going to take off more paper than that, but for right now, I just took off what was around the edges but I'm gonna go in with black velvet and this is this is just the backer of what was in the picture frame already I'm just gonna recycle what was already in it um, it had a sticker on the back so I I went ahead and painted both sides of it just to make it match so we're gonna use the laurel mold um, the olive crust mold, and then this is a redesign mold. It's called, uh, Vintage Roots. Um, it's got carrots, mushrooms, I think it's a radish, and I don't know what the other one is, but we're going to break out the Fabricast. This works just like the Amazing Casting Resin, but it is so much cheaper. Um, I just put it in little bitty bottles um do the same parts a and b 
50-50, just like the Amazing Casting Resin. And it cures just as fast. I, I left a little bit of it in here just to show you how quickly, just like the Amazing Casting Resin, you can heat it up and bend it. Like I wanted these a little bit more straight, so I'm bending them back out after I'm heating them up with my heat gun. But we're going to put our bunny down, Mr. Dapper Gentleman. And the background of this kind of gave me a little bit... <laughs> this one was a challenge because if you really look at his background, it's kind of muddled. You can't really see what his background is. And... With it being on rice paper, it is an inkjet or a laser jet printer, but I still had to seal it because I didn't want it to run. So I did have to seal them in. So this is all with liquid patina. But I wanted to make his background blend in with the backer board, right? So I got weathered wood, little black dress. Prairie Gray, and Gypsy Green, and I think I also grabbed some Sandy Blonde, and I didn't show it, but at first, I started just kind of dabbing it around, thinking that I was going to try to blend it and kind of make it look muddled, just like his background is now. But once I started actually blending everything out, it didn't look right to me. So you can see I'm, I'm putting the different colors out and spacing them out. And I start blending them and I'm spraying water on it. I, I used a lot of water on this. And I started blending, and they were blending fine, and it, I get, I think it probably would have looked fine to, <laughs> to somebody not as picky as I am, um, but it didn't look right to my eye. Uh, to me, it just didn't look like he was disappearing into his background, so I wasn't happy with it. So I went back in and got um, some of the little black dress and took it out more from him around his face and around his ears and then I was like okay if I can't disguise him then I'm going to make it obvious that it's different so I actually started going in with kind of a crisscross pattern with all of the colors so I went back and forth with all of the colors making kind of an x with all of them and that's, I'm using the green now, and then I go in with the prairie gray and the weathered wood. I use all of the colors. And now I'm going in with a little black dress, basically as my finishing to kind of draw everything together. Because I want your eye to be drawn to the entire page, not to just one spot. So I'm going to take weathered wood and paint all of our little castings that came out of the molds. And then our little roots, we're going to use the gypsy green for the leaves, of course. And then the uh, prairie gray, we're going to use for um, the vegetable part of the root, I guess you could say. Uh, so it's, I didn't want them to be, well, I can't say I didn't want them to be realistic because I think they're realistic, but I didn't want them to be bright green, if that makes sense. But so here I took everything that was left, all the prairie gray, all the weathered wood, all of the little black dress, everything that was left, I just mixed it together and put some salt wash in it. And now I'm going to stipple it over the entire frame. 
So just to give it a texture because it was really, really slick. So I'm going to cover this entire frame just to give it a little bit of a, a bumpy texture. So now we're going to go in with liquid patina because you could still see the the uh, difference between the rabbit and the background. And I wanted both to match. So I'm going to cover and this will also seal in my paint. So I'm going to go in just with one coat of liquid patina over the entire thing. Just to make him kind of disappear. Not disappear, but you know what I mean. Not, not be shiny and then not match the background, if that makes sense. So clear DIY wax. We're going to seal our castings and our roots. I keep an empty little canister of clear wax to put kind of dip into because you don't want to dip into your big jug of it because you'll contaminate it. Plus, if you're waxing uh, dark colors, uh, that will come off onto your brush and you'll see it. So you'll get paint all in your wax. So just scoop out what you need. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to seal the, the wood. This will seal all of the paint on the vegetables, on the frame, everything. So we've got one more mold that we're going to do, the conservatory labels. We're going to break this out. One thing that's cool about this mold is they made it thinner. Um, these, they're conservatory labels. So they're supposed to be labeling, you know, bugs and pots and, you know, whatever. They're labels, right? And that's another thing that they've changed. They've put the name of the mold on the side of the actual mold itself so if you stack them like i do in a like a tupperware thing you can actually see what mold you're bringing out but they've made these thinner and i try to show you um they're not as bulky as like if i would have casted like the one the top one the olive crust mold has one similar if i would have tried to cast that it would have been twice as thick so I think it's really cool that they made these thinner. So I'm going to put a coat of weathered wood so to make it match. And then with our beautiful apothecary labels, we're going to stamp some initials on here. And I was trying to figure out what I wanted to put on here. Um, I was thinking, okay, he's got a suit on. You know, he's he looks dapper, but that was too. I'm showing you what all comes in the stamp set. <laughs> but I was trying to think of what to put on here. And I thought to myself, OK, he looks important. He looks like a CEO, but he's not a officer. He's a rabbit. So I'm seasoning my stamp. So instead of CEO, I stamp CER <laughs> for Chief Executive Rabbit. So I'm going to season my stamps and get my little pieces of thin mounts. I have two thin mounts. I have one that I've cut up into little pieces like this so I can use the little stamps and not have to fiddle with that huge sheet. So I'm going to lay out my little letters. I am so glad they came out with this, these stamps. These are so cool. I was going to do on the first block, I was going to do that entire phrase with these letters, but oh my gosh. I think that would have taken me forever <laughs> and I didn't have the patience, but I'm going to use faded burlap as my quote unquote ink and using my JRV stencil 
brush I'm gonna stencil a little bit of that paint on and stamp that on to my little tag and see at first I didn't get it dark enough so I <laughs> I was scared so I had to put a little bit more paint on it and then I really pressed it on and then I got my little dauber tool and daubed the little I, it has a period on there but I didn't want it as big as I thought it was going to make it so I just made my own but look how cute so I'm gonna take some liquid patina and seal that faded burlap and the weathered wood on the entire casting itself so I'm gonna seal the entire thing with some liquid patina and then we're gonna take some golden rule and kind of purdy it up put it all over the raised areas of the castings and this is kind of what I did with the dapper foxes if you remember back in my Halloween episode I love the way this looks you can see the difference the weather would with and without it it makes it look like wrought iron like rusty old wrought iron it's the coolest effect I love it so I'm gonna do this with all of the castings I'm gonna put just rub it all over the roots the castings and I'm also gonna rub it onto the frame so it's going to make that look kind of grungy as well and old. So we're going to flip this over and start assembling everything. And I did not paint the back of the castings using my Starbon Ick Super Glue. I didn't paint the back of the castings because I knew I was gluing them down and I wanted them to stick. So I'm going to glue these down and my super high tech way of <laughs> keeping them in place, <laughs> grab everything that you can that is in arm's reach to hold it down and put down my top two little swirly dilly doos. And then with the roots, since there was a lot of gaps on them and I was afraid they would get bumped and kind of get knocked off, I'm using E6000. And this stuff is like cement. So I'm going to glue those on with E6000. So anywhere they're touching, I put a big glob of it on there. And again, with my super high-tech way of holding them down, used cans of paint and oh my gosh look at my little Mr. Dapper gentleman isn't he adorable or handsome handsome isn't he handsome I love him I love how this turned out I love the new stamps the stamps are incredible the IOD sisters killed it this spring let me know what y'all's favorite was. Remember to like, subscribe, comment down below. Thank you for your patience. I really, really, really appreciate it. I love all y'all. And remember, y'all are beautiful and you can do hard things. Thanks, guys. Bye.